All right, places to go in Seattle. The Pike Place Market. It opens at 9 a.m. My favorite spots in the market are the first Starbucks, the weird little Tibetan apothecary that's always impossible to find, and the tea shop where you can buy tea in bulk or mix your own blend out of hundreds of ingredients. Make sure you walk down Post Alley and find the gum wall. For your shopping, go to Uwajimaya in the International District. It's a huge Asian supermarket where you can find delicious moshi, lychee soda, and fruits and vegetables that look like some alien took a shit. Then wander down the street to a traditional Chinese apothecary where you can buy some dried up ginger to pep you up. If you can find a fish store in this neighborhood, it will be as good as an aquarium. The International District is also the place to go late at night. Many restaurants stay open till 1 or 2 a.m. Absolutely my favorite spot is Oasis, which is kind of a trendy local hangout for Korean teenagers where you can get bubble tea in like a hundred different flavors. So, I'm a big fan of the underground Seattle tour that leaves from the historic Pioneer Square. Near the square is Waterfall Park, which is a nice spot to catch your breath and make a wish. If you want to see the view, forget the Space Needle, go up the Smith Tower. You have to go to the Seattle Public Library. Its architecture is amazing. Bonus points if you can find the red intestine floor. Down at the piers, you gotta go to Ye Old Curiosity Shop. It's basically a free museum with actual human mummies in the back. Next door, go to Ivers. It's like quintessential Seattle fast food. I recommend salmon chowder in a bread bowl. As for the beaches, Alki Beach is a good one, as are the Golden Gardens in Ballard. Not to mention the Olympic Sculpture Park, which is a free nine-acre outdoor sculpture museum that also has a beach. If you don't want to get out of the city, but still want to check out a rainforest, try Schmidt's Park in Alki. It is quite the jungle. The Seattle Center is a cool place to hang out, with its weird sculptures and fountains you can get wet in. That whole area is museums and theaters. I love the Experience Music Project and the Sci-Fi Museum, and there's always a festival going on in the Center House. There is a Dale Chihuly exhibition going on there right now, and that ought to be mind-blowing. You can go to one of the underground bus stations and take the bus to the University of Washington, which is a cool place to explore, especially when the cherry trees bloom. I like the Burke Museum, which lets students in for a mere $7.50. If you want to see the city, the skyline, just ride the ferry. It's a good way to see the city, get some sea air, it only costs $8. If you want to get out of the city, there are some really cool places to day trip, and I'm going to go into those now. So, two hours outside of Seattle in the mountains is Leavenworth, this hella trippy Bavarian town. Three hours will get you out to the Pacific Ocean, or to the whole rainforest, one of only two temperate rainforests in the world. In Tacoma, which is about an hour drive from Seattle, you can go to the amazing Glass Museum, or tour around some beautiful old Victorian houses. A two-hour drive will get you to Fort Warden, my favorite state park. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. 500 acres of abandoned, supposedly haunted underground bunkers and creepy graffiti which can be explored with flashlights. On the Kitsap Peninsula, my home, you can tour Palsbo, where everything is still Norwegian, or visit the Suquamish Indian Reservation and pay your respects to Chief Seattle. So, those are the things I can think of for now.